I bet you never expected to see this implement getting used here at the snooker shed. <laughs> Welcome back to the Snooker Shed and today we're going to have a look how I use the rest. Okay, so what we're going to do is give you a few tips on using the rest. And tip number one is make the shot as simple as possible. Now you can look at Kyron Wilson and try and imitate some of the shots that he uses on the rest. And it's almost impossible. He's better with the rest than most professionals are with their hand. So keep the shot nice and simple. Looking at this shot, I'm just going to pot the red and try and hold for the black with the tiniest bit of screw. Nice and simple, nothing fancy. I'm not adding any side. All I'm doing is hitting it nice and soft. I've not got the greatest position on the black, but I've still made the pot. So, tip number two is strike the ball with the least amount of pace you possibly can. Now, this is a massive one because we all know that when you put the slightest bit of side on the cue ball, add to that some energy for your hand, the cue ball is going to go wildly across the table. So, by reducing the amount of pace you use, reduces that chance of getting cue ball deflection in a big way. So, tip number three, and it's how I aim with the rest. So if you think about the rest, the way you hold it, I'm right-handed, is I always hold the rest of my left hand. So if you think I'm going to aim with the rest because it's the cross on the rest that dictates where the cue goes. Hey people, how are you doing? Some new additives to the snooker shed door. Ronnie Rose who lives in Kelly's Island in Ohio. It's 3,600 miles away. I wonder if he's got a snooker table on the island. Then a wee bit closer to home, I'm going to say hello, a big, big hello to Paul from Peterborough, who's 362 miles away by car. So I'm looking at the shot, and I'm going to line this up exactly the same as I would do with any other shot. And all I'm doing is putting the rest on the line of aim. Once I've got that on the line of aim, we're good to go. Okay, quickly moving on to tip number four. Now, like we said in tip number three, I'm using the rest to line the shot up. Good. So now I'm going to put the cue in, and if I've got the rest in the correct place, then my cue should already be lined up. Now this is where using the rest differs quite a bit from just playing the normal shot. I could move the rest either side of my cue here, but when I set my body up, I have to keep my head in line with the cue. And keeping that line and having that built into the rest pre-shot routine makes it much easier. So I keep it nice and straight, and now I've got pressure on the rest just before I deliver the cue. So moving on to tip number five, and this is practicing using the rest, and more importantly, self-diagnosis on when it's all going wrong. It's going to be just like anything else. Using the rest is all about straight cueing. If we can cue straight, we're going to make this much, much easier. So start like you would do to learn to cue straight. It's a straight pot. Get the rest. Line it up for the straight pot. Do your pre-shot routine. And you're going to strike the ball just above centre. And all I'm trying to do is put both in the pocket. So let's move on to when it goes all wrong and we have to bring self-diagnosis into play. So all I'm going to do here is try and play the same shot again. It's just a practice shot. I'm just running the cue ball 
straight in behind the red. Okay, so the shot never went correct. So what I'm going to look at is first of all, did I hit center ball? So when you've got the rest, the cue, as you can see here from the pictures in front of the cue ball, they obstruct your field of vision, which makes it that wee bit more difficult to see your striking center ball. Now for the pictures and video here, you can clearly see using Nick Barrow's ball, it's very simple to see that line straight up and down. So now that I've got this ball on the table and I can see that I'm going to hit center ball, what I can do to help me diagnose if it's going wrong is move the shape of my body. So this is where your stance comes into play. How I'm standing on the shot. How I'm holding the cue with my grip. And this is really important because this is where the chances are you're going to come across the cue ball and add that unwanted side that's going to stop you cueing straight. So, working on your stance, I do the same thing all the time. I'm just going to stand in front of the shot, just like I would. It's all the exact same as the video for straight cueing and learning the straight cue. I get into the stance and I get comfortable. I do this pre-shot routine. So, the same as what's before, as I'm going to stop and just double check that I'm striking the cue ball where I want. Now we're going to look at the feathers, and this is really obvious. If you look at the tip against the marked ball, you could actually see the tip going left to right or right to left on the ball. Now I would suggest that looking at the grip that you've got here might help with that. But there's also this thing, the elbow, the shoulder, and how you build up your stance is all about your personal preference. It's just got to strike the cue ball straight. So here's another wee gadget that I've got that I've used in the snooker shed. And this is Nick Barrow's cue action trainer. And this here helps see what's happening with the cue as it goes through. And I'm using the trainer here in the rest mode. And as you can see, it's pretty self-explanatory. I've got two wee balls on there, and if I twist the cue left or right, the wee balls will fall off. Nick Barrow's cue action trainer does lots of other things. Primarily, it helps you learn to cue straight with another set of legs on it. Links in the description. Told you the wee balls fall off. So that's us done for another video here at the Snooker Shed, and I'm off for a rest. This is Newt Wales in Canton, Michigan, and I'll see you on the table.